Well, it's time to get back into the garage and start working on some stuff. And I think the next project I'm gonna spend some time on is the rebuild on my 30 pounder disinformation. Now, its last usage was as borrowed time when Zach borrowed it to use for the event down in Southern California. But I have used this at lots of different events over a long period of time. Um, it's left the country, it's gone down to Brazil. Uh, you know, I've, I've had a really long run with this particular robot, but it is definitely showing its age at this point in time. There's, there's almost nothing of this that still works the way I would like it to. And I've got different ideas. I've got some different things I want to do. So I'm going to try to do a long series of uh, the rebuild on this particular robot. So we'll go through all the pieces that I'm making and everything I'm doing. So I'm going to try to try to document everything on this so that we've got a fairly complete build history on the robot. Uh, we've got a lot of 30 pound events that I can go support with this. So obviously there's uh, NHRL events back east. That would be a good option. There's the SCAR events in Southern California. Another great option. Um, there's other options outside the country. So there's the Brazil events. I'd love to get a chance to go back to Brazil. Uh, there's some events that are uh, taken up in New Zealand and they'd love to have me come over for that. So there's a, there's some different options. And right now today, I don't have a 30 pounder that runs. And so uh, we're gonna start on that rebuild process and we're gonna dig into, uh, dig into rebuilding disinformation. And I think the first thing we might dive into is going to be a brushless drive system. The drive system on the previous version of disinformation was these uh, main box gearboxes with the 775 brushed motors and then, uh, uh, you know, the like a five inch wheel. Okay. And the width of the robot was basically mandated by the drive system. I mean, there's a I could probably squish those together half an inch or so. That's about it, though. All right. So this is what one of those drive pods looks like. And what I'd really like to do is I'd like to shrink this up a little bit. And so my game plan is to use a uh, brushless motor and an outrun or something that's shorter. Still use the same gearbox, still use the, you know, same tire arrangements. But just find a way to see if I can get a little more power and compact the whole thing a little bit more in the process. These are some brushless motors I actually just have here in the garage. They're probably a little bigger than I need in this case. However, it should provide plenty of power. And mount it up. It's going to be... Okay, so it's going to shrink that whole system over an inch on each side. So probably two, two and a half inches total uh, reduction in the width of the robot, which is what I'm after because there's, there's a fair amount of dead space in here. And I'd like to get this whole robot more compact in the process. When you want to mount up a motor to a gearbox that it wasn't actually made for, you're going to have to make some custom stuff. So one of the things is where this bolts to this motor, I need something that will be designed to bolt to this motor. And the front of it is different than the one it's made for. And I'm not really breaking any new ground here. This is a fairly common thing a lot of people have done. So common, in fact, that Bainbot's cells mount plates that have not yet been machined for the motor mounting to allow you to custom machine your own. So I'm going to have to uh, drill a pattern for the, the bolt holes and probably open that up just a little bit more so it clears the, clears the little uh, clip there so that everything works like it's supposed to. But at least I don't have to custom make the whole piece. I can actually just buy these straight from Bainbots and all I have to do is just machine the mount to mount this weapon to this gearbox. And this is a standard five millimeter output shaft. So they also sell the pinion gears that will work with this particular shaft. So this should be a fairly straightforward upgrade to this robot.
couple operations down. Just got a counterbore where those screws go in and then I got one done. All right, all machined up. Looks good on the uh, on the mill. I guess we'll have to bolt it up and see how it looks there. So here we have the unmachined version versus the one machine for my use. I had to op open up that center hole larger so that it would clear that clip right there that spins on top of the motor. So the shaft fit through the original hole, but I needed that clip to clear. Um, these are the holes for where the screws mount. You got to counter bore them enough so that they stay flush. The problem here in this, this guy here is where those screws ended up having to be was all the way out where that had to fit against the, the gearbox itself. So they had, they had to go down in far enough that they cleared not just the flat surface, but where they meet up with the gear head. So uh, had to take them down 160 thousandths to get that to fit in there. So but uh, should all bolt together. So I guess let's bolt it up and see what we got. So here's a comparison of the motor I was using before and the motor I'm gonna be using next time. And you can see that there's a fair difference in the physical size between the two, even though this guy has a lot more power. So there should be a pretty good upgrade for the robot. Now one thing I'm gonna have to worry about here, you can see how far out that pinion gear sits in the gearbox. So that shaft, output shaft on that motor is way too long. So I'm gonna end up having to uh, trim him down a little bit. So I got a little more machining to do, uh, but then we're ready to bolt it together and see how it fits. One other thing, that motor mounted up is 258 grams. That motor mounted up. Uh, it's 374 grams, so not only am I saving space, but I am freeing up weight as well. So here is the two drive motor arrangements pulled out of the robot, out of the frame. Okay. Here are the new ones. And you can see quite a bit less space. The old system is about 14 inches wide end to end, and this one is 11 inches wide end to end. So I should be able to make the robot itself about three inches narrower, assuming I can fit everything else in there. And that would make it much easier to make weight, it would make everything stronger. So as long as I can get everything to fit in there, this is a pretty big upgrade. And these guys right here have about double the wattage of these. So not only am I doing all this, saving weight, saving space, but I'm getting more power out of it too. Okay, the scale test. Two drive motors from before. Weighed in at two pounds, 9.7 ounces. And the two new ones. Two pounds, 0. 0.06 go. So, just over nine ounces, over half a pound, by switching to a more powerful drive. So keep following along as we go through the rebuild process on disinformation. Uh, it's my intention to turn this into a screamer. Got a new weapon system I'm gonna design for it. I think the, uh, I think the redesign on the drive system is gonna work out really good. So uh, next time, maybe we'll look at the weapon. I gotta get the, some speed controllers so we can start uh, programming things to dry those drives on. So uh, it's gonna be, gonna be a lot of work, gonna be a lot of fun. I think I'm gonna like it when it's all said and done. So uh, keep watching, we got more coming.